Normally, when making a video on an election, I would stress the importance of it. Why is this election significant? What could the results be? How have political lines shifted and what issues are mobilising the masses? Indeed, I've seen videos and articles about the Italian elections. Oftentimes they highlight an insurgency against the establishment, with the Five Star Movement being the example, or the impending Italian exit of the Eurozone and the rise of Matteo Salvini, or maybe the inexplicable re-entry of Berlusconi into Italian politics. Thing is, there's nothing particularly special about these elections, in that it seems regardless of any of the possible results, little will change. Doesn't make for a great video really, does it? There are a few developments of interest, I'm sure, so well, let's have a look at the contenders and the context. Firstly, since 1992, Italy doesn't really have two political blocs of the centre competing with each other, as other countries throughout Europe do. Most nations of Europe have democracies that shift between a centre-left and centre-right government, interspersed with periods of coalition that often end up being a combination of the two. Italy had the same with post-World War II politics being dominated by a Christian democracy, a centre-right outfit with the Communist Party functioning as the opposition. This all fell apart with the Mani Pulite inquiry, which enmeshed Christian democracy in rife corruption scandals they never recovered from. The Communist Party dissolved voluntarily in 1991, citing the end of communism, the collapse of the Soviet Union, and the necessity to adhere to social democratic principles instead. The point is, Italy's Second Republic can be characterised as having an almost institutionally structured level of political instability. Let's put it this way. The country since 2011 has had four different prime ministers, none of which were elected by the people but appointed by the president following the collapse of the government prior. Without a dependable and sizeable centre-right and centre-left to take the government's reins, the country instead possesses a hodgepodge of smaller groups that often end up forming unwieldy coalitions, as a result of no pre-election coalition winning a sizeable enough majority to govern. This means post hoc coalitions are largely formed after the fact, which is predictably unwieldy and prone to split as soon as a reluctant coalition partner rocks the boat. In order to rectify this, a new electoral law was passed last year. I don't want to go into too much detail here, but the basics are thus. Italians get two votes, one for the Senate and one for the Chamber of Deputies. 37% of seats are to be won on a first-past-the-post basis, meaning the party that gets the most votes gets the respective seat. 63% of seats will be filled via national proportional representation based on party lists. The point here is, the first-past-the-post system strongly awards coalition formation and regional loyalties. This is because similar parties would be mad to neglect coalition opportunities and thus potentially split their respective votes, and moreover certain parties have strongholds in certain regions, meaning a first-past-the-post system strongly favours certain parties in certain areas. With this in mind, unsurprisingly, this law was backed by the Democratic Party, the Lega and Forza Italia. The Lega because of scattered strongholds throughout the north of the country, the PD for the same reason, and Forza Italia due to Berlusconi's uncanny ability to form coalitions. Conversely, the Five Star Movement strongly criticised the reform, being a relatively new party on the political scene and not drawing from the traditional territory carved out by parties before them, they lack regional strongholds. Moreover, up until recently they have eschewed the possibility of forming a coalition with anyone, significantly disadvantaging themselves. Anyway, what are the issues, and who are the actors? Well, let's begin with the right. The centre-right bloc that has formed thanks to Berlusconi first took government in 1994, winning the first post mani Pulite elections. The coalition consisted of Forza Italia, fronted as it is today by Berlusconi, the Lega Nord, which was then led by Umberto Bossi, and the Alianza Nazionale, the National Alliance, which subsequently became today's Brothers of Italy. This government lasted barely a few months after the Lega withdrew their support. This same coalition made a return to politics in 2001, which lasted until 2006. Berlusconi subsequently merged his party with the National Alliance for the 2008 elections and returned to government to be ousted in 2011 amidst numerous scandals. 
Berlusconi, often dubbed the eternal leader due to his unparalleled ability to re-enter politics time and time again, has reinitiated the same coalition of old. This is an important point to raise, I think, because many outside of Italy see the prominent positions both the Lega and the Fratelli d'Italia have, and frame this like a sort of rise of the right, or compare it to the alternative for Deutschland in Germany. That's not the case, and most of the time Berlusconi has seen government, has been with the support of the League and precursors to the Brothers of Italy. The League are an interesting party that warrant a short period of discussion. If you are interested in a more in-depth analysis of their history, then I have a very thorough video entitled aptly, Who are the Lega Nord? If you read anything in the Western press, you will likely see them labelled a far-right party, which is a bit odd in some ways. Until very recently, the party were a regionalist group, fronted by Umberto Bossi and sought increased autonomy for the north of the country. It wasn't until the 21st century that the party reoriented direction and increasingly came to focus on immigration. Matteo Salvini, current party leader, is responsible for transforming the party into a Eurosceptic one. And even then, his position has been thoroughly moderated, not least by many within the Lega itself. It should be borne in mind that throughout the 90s, the Lega Nord supported the EU. In fact, one of their arguments in favour of secession from the South was that the North of the country meets EU fiscal requirements, whereas the South didn't and doesn't, thanks to endemic corruption and financial mismanagement. Now though, the party is very different, and has increasingly aligned itself with the radical right populist parties emerging throughout Europe. This has alienated much of the rank and file who still hold the more traditional ideas of Bossi. Salvini has dropped Nord from the party name, and now the party is in the process of becoming a national force, with immigration being the core party message. Problem for the party is, they're, understandably, finding it difficult to gain traction in the South. Decades of denigrating Southerners as lazy, irresponsible and corrupt haven't exactly played to their favour in this regard. That's not a major issue though for the right. Mopping up votes in the South is the Brothers of Italy, a party whose roots do genuinely lie with the Italian far right, although it would be misleading to label them that way today. Giorgia Meloni cut her teeth in the post-fascist Italian social movement in the early 90s at the age of 15. By 2006, she became the youngest ever deputy president of the Chamber of Deputies, with the National Alliance in coalition with the Lega Nord and Berlusconi. Throughout this campaign, she's been presenting herself as the mature family woman, caught between a bickering Salvini and Berlusconi. Where I live in the south of the country are numerous billboards displaying Meloni smiling, urging Italians to defend the traditional Italian family. The party are basically a strongly national conservative force, but far less populist than the League or Berlusconi are. Boying the right appreciably throughout this election cycle is the issue of immigration, especially so recently following the gruesome murder and dismemberment of a young Italian woman in the town of Macharetta. The perpetrator appears to be a Nigerian immigrant and following this discovery, one Italian brutally took matters into his own hands, shooting and wounding six black immigrants. Instead of renouncing the violence as the media baited Salvini into doing, Salvini retorted that those who allow hundreds of thousands of phony refugees and real criminals to land here are morally responsible for acts of violence committed in Italy. Indeed, the supposedly moderating influence of Berlusconi was tampered. Berlusconi himself stated that the 600,000 new arrivals to Italy were a ticking bomb. Unsurprisingly, a central pledge of the right-wing bloc is the deportation of hundreds of thousands. The problem with this is, this very centre-right bloc hasn't exactly got a great track record when it comes to immigration. Take the infamous and now repealed Bossi Fini law, for example. Passed by the right-wing coalition in 2002, the law criminalised all those who entered the country illegally. Thing is, all those resident in the country prior to the law were naturalised, resulting in hundreds of thousands of illegal migrants gaining citizenship. Moreover, it was Berlusconi that signed the Dublin Regulation, this is the law that requires migrants to apply for asylum in the first European country they enter. It is this regulation that is responsible for hundreds of thousands of asylum seekers being caught up in Italy, waiting to be granted asylum instead of pushing further to the north of the continent. Ready to take the anti-immigration mantle from the coalition are the Forza Nuova, 
who have become increasingly active on the streets. Interestingly enough, the founder of Forza Nuova is one Roberto Fiore. This is kind of irrelevant to the video, but as a Brit and as someone obsessed with this stuff, Fiore had a significant influence over the trajectory of the far right in Britain throughout the 1980s. He was actually one of the principal exponents and influences over the political soldier wing of the National Front, and liaised, and indeed still does liaise, closely with Nick Griffin, former leader of the British National Party. If you want more on that, you can watch my video on the rise and fall of the British National Party and the failure of the British National Front. Fiore fled Italy to reside in Britain for a number of years after bombs and weaponry were found in the offices of his third position organisation. Anyway, rising in tandem with movements like the Forza Nuova are left-wing activist street organisations. Recently, the regional leader of Forza Nuova's Sicilian division was bound and attacked in Palermo. A Forza Nuova rally in Macereta following the shooting was met with numerous huge rallies throughout the nation protesting racism. Berlusconi later stated that anti-fascism was also a dangerous movement. Indeed, the situation I guess isn't all that different from the one currently in the US. As for the centre-left, there's not all that much to say. Renzi is attempting to make a comeback after the referendum disaster of 2016, and will probably pick up just shy of 25% of the vote or so, maybe more as undecided moderates drift towards the continuity candidate. That's basically all the PD are able to offer at this point. A somewhat technocratic government full of veterans that offer a caretaker sort of government. The party is plagued by a lack of decent coalition options, and has only forged ties with very novel parties on the political scene, such as More Europe, Together and Popular Civic List, all with very flimsy and unreliable support bases. This means that Renzi is hugely disadvantaged. On the issue of immigration, the issue of the day of course, the party does have one card up its sleeve, and that's Marco Minitti. Minitti is the Minister of the Interior and has worked closely with authorities, both legitimate and illegitimate, in Libya, to help quell the flow of migrants reaching the country. Minitti has been met with heavy criticism, but is a popular politician throughout the country. And lastly, we come to the new kids on the block. Politics in Italy is no longer a right-left game. The Five Star Movement can now call themselves the largest single party in the country, but quite what that means is anyone's guess. With a central platform built around anti-corruption and replacing an old guard of politicians with young and bright faces, many are unsure of anything they stand for beyond this. Like the League, I have an in-depth video on the Five Star Movement entitled Who Are the Five Star Movement? Back when Roberto Casaleggio and Beppe Grillo formed and fronted the party, the emphasis was on dismantling representative democracy and introducing a completely novel, technological and direct means through which regular people could have their voices heard. The various opinions of individual members wasn't so important as the new method of political practice they were pushing for. In any case, Grillo himself was pretty outspoken against the EU, outspoken against immigration, and some of this wrongly led many to lump the Five Star Movement in with the populist radical right, an absolutely erroneous assertion. Now the party, according to Grillo, has entered its so-called adult phase. Gone are the days of the middle finger and the big fuck you to politicians during an annual day of rebellion. Grillo has taken a backseat and his blog, that used to be a central hub of party activity, now has no formal affiliation to the party. Instead, they don suits and have positions of prominence throughout the country, including the mayorship of Rome. But then, if the anti-establishment mystique of the party has all but vanished, what's left? The face of the party is Luigi Di Maio, a veteran of the party and a telegenic face for the media. His rhetoric is less populist, more reasoned. Indeed, one Italian, when I asked why he would vote for the Five Star Movement, claimed that on their electoral list they have the highest proportion of graduates. This is the kind of image they want to portray. The young, the educated, taking the country back from an out of touch, old school, and entrenched elite. But again, when their selling point is that they aren't ideological, that they aren't experienced in, nor corrupted by, politics, new problems emerge. Virginia Raggi, for example, the mayor of Rome, has hardly been a raging success story. She took the post in 2016 with big promises regarding waste disposal and infrastructure. 
Sure, she's perceived as basically a good person, but she hasn't delivered the goods where promised. This is the thing. When your platform is nothing more than we are not corrupt, vote for us, any little sliver of corruption, no matter how small, is going to tarnish you. A missing one million scandal demonstrates this. Basically, all five-star politicians must put a certain percentage of their salaries towards a fund to help small businesses. In sum, the party has raised over 23 million euros, a significant and admirable sum indeed. However, one million euros is unaccounted for. Turns out, some five-star politicians weren't playing by the rules, and guess what makes the headlines? The missing million sparks a furore, the 23 million goes ignored. This selection is an odd one. Normally, when I cover an election, I'm talking about the possible outcomes and how significant this election is for not just the country, but oftentimes Europe in general. Well, the Italian elections, I guess, are interesting, and the players all have fascinating quirks, histories, and trajectories. However, what this will mean come government formation time is less quirky and, well, I guess less interesting. It is the job of the president to select the next prime minister, and he will do so on votes achieved, but also on the basis of who is most likely to be able to form a stable coalition. This basically immediately discounts the five-star movement, who no one would particularly like to form a partnership with, and many regard as a liability. They may garner 30% of the vote, but that's not enough to form a government. The same can be said of the right-wing coalition, in that the chances of them together obtaining 40% is slim. The Lega and Forza Italia are a few points apart, but Forza will most likely edge out a victory within the coalition, putting Berlusconi in the running for the position of Prime Minister. Problem with that is, due to his conviction, he cannot take office, and so a proxy of his will have to be installed. Indeed, another grand coalition between the PD and Forza Italia cannot be discounted either, and it's actually probably the most likely. Another post hoc government consisting of political veterans and technocrats. The argument in favour of this is, Italy's economy is in trouble, these are turbulent times, don't rock the boat. Problem for Italians is, many believe that the boat is sinking anyway. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you liked the video, don't forget to please click like and do subscribe if you haven't already. If you didn't, hey, leave a dislike, leave a comment, tell me where I went wrong. As always, huge thank you to all of my patrons. It's thanks to you guys that these videos are regular. If it's within your means to do so and you like what I do, then please do consider becoming a patron yourself. It really is a helping hand. As always, thanks a lot, guys, and until next time.